You know what, I'm sad they lost, but you gotta take the little victories, you know? I guess. Like what, getting at least one point? No, at least Tyson Berry wasn't the one to score it in OT. It was trending that way. It was trending that way. Let's go! Good, we all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty! What am I doing? Into my kitchen! Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <laughs> and when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple crumple yeet! Saw so that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. get a point and that'll have to be good enough unfortunately against the nashville predators because they lost three two in overtime screwed that intro up but i promise the rest of the video will be pretty good and that's the thing isn't it you screw up early you do well for the rest of it and if that's not this game in a nutshell before we get into the real nitty gritty of this game i want to talk about two things number one this lfr sponsor is me I'm using the space to sponsor me! Specifically, the raffle that I'm doing in support of Easter Seals Ontario, which is a charity that supports kids with physical disabilities. I've told you this many, many times. I'm raising money for the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic. It's a tournament where I'm going to play actual hockey on ice and make an, a, a batox of myself. Every year I play, every year I'm bad, every year I'm the top fundraiser, so don't talk ish but it's because of lovely people like you and lovely people like ronald fox who contacted me and offered me two leafs tickets for the game on march 2nd between the leafs and rangers in toronto how do you enter the raffle for these tickets it's very easy link in the description if you donate five dollars or more any donation I, you can donate more if you want but all you need is five bucks to enter the raffle you are automatically entered into it. If you have already donated before today, doesn't matter. You're already entered into the raffle. If you haven't, you it's not too late. Five bucks. Five bucks and you could win two tickets to a Leafs game against the Rangers. Yes, it's in March, but I don't know. They were free. And, or for you, five bucks. So you want them or not? Also, it's a good cause. So once again, I ask you, you want them or not? It's great when you're the advertiser and not someone else because there's there's no standards. I can just yell at you. The other thing I wanted to get to, and it does pertain to the game and going forward, Jake McCabe is out of the lineup. It doesn't look like it's going to be long term, so that's good. But Timothy Liljegren leaves this game early. So once again, the Leafs have to end the game with five defensemen. So with William Lagesson making his Leafs debut, he's already up, he's already in the lineup. If Lilligren can't go and McCabe can't go, who do the Leafs turn to? The good news is they're done this road trip, they're gonna go home, but which defenseman from the Marlies do they potentially use? I know a lot of people are thinking Simone Benoit, but in this edition of Marley Minute with Nick Barden, who is a credentialed reporter who covers the Marlies, he thinks it's someone else, Maxim Lajoie. Take a look. Oh, he, ne he needs an intro. Marley Minute, Marley Minute, talking about the Marlies, it's Nick Barden, Marley Minute. Marley one of the reasons why I think Max Lajoie will get the call up over Simon Benoit is the games played factor. Benoit has only played just a couple games with the Marlies since preseason where he played plenty of games. He's been up and down between the Leafs and the Marlies since then. And Lajoie has played a lot of minutes with the Toronto Marlies playing in their top four. He's also been a big guy on their power play. I think one of the reasons that you, you know, you lose a guy like Timothy Lilligren, who's on the second power play unit for the Leafs, is you can insert a guy like Max Lajoie. Lajoie has played the top power play for the Marlies, and he's looked good in almost every area of the ice. His defensive games look strong. He's been really physical. I think Max Lajoie is the perfect player to get the call up, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it's Benoit. I think those two guys are the legitimate ones here, but I do think that Lajoie has the edge because of the games played factor. And as well, he's looked really good in those games played with the Toronto Marlies this season. Yeah, I think a lot of us assumed Simone Benoit would be the guy, and he might be the guy because he's been up with this team, but the dude's played two games. Benoit could be a better option than Lajoie, but is he a better option than Lajoie right now? That's what the Leafs need. The best option available. 
It's probably Max Lajoie, who randomly had 56 games played with the Senators back in the 1819 season, and he's only played in 14 since. But he's only 25, he's on the bigger side of average, 191 pounds, 6 foot 1. He can be in the Leafs lineup for their next game. But this game! You can't win them all, and that's a cliche, and no one wants to hear it. Has that ever made anyone feel better? No, it hasn't! But the stats and the eye test for this one both linked up. The Leafs kicked the Predators up and down the ice all night in their own building. They just couldn't come up with the W because of UC Soros. These are the stats for this Leafs Predators game from Sport Logic. The Leafs better in expected goals 3.36 to 1.8. The Preds did have more ozone time with the puck. Shots though 35 to 24 for the Leafs. Slot shots on net 17 to 12 for the Leafs. High danger scoring chances 17 to 11. Scoring chances off the cycle 11 to 7. Scoring chances off the rush 12 to 5. Turnover scoring chances 12 to 8. Odd man rushes 9 to 5. Uh, uh, controlled entry success rate 64 to 60. Controlled exit 74 to 72. Controlled exit success rate 82 to 80. Puck battle win percentage 77.8 to 22.2. The Leafs kicked the Predators up and down the entire strip. But UC Saro's doing what he does nearly every game where the Predators are able to come up with two points and that's being their best player. The Leafs still managed to solve them twice, once on the power play and this was despicable. Leafs bobbling the puck, they almost lose it. John Tavares, a Herculean effort to hold on to the thing. Matthews bobbles it, Herculean effort to hold on to the thing again. Martyr to Matthews to Nylander, BOW! That is a contract year blast! And did I talk about that at the beginning of the season or what? Nylander has a one-timer now and it is lethal! His sixth of the season already and it's one nothing Leafs. But within 90 seconds it all falls apart. TJ Brody goes off for roughing and that's significant because you're already down a penalty killer in Jake McCabe. He's not in the lineup and now Brody's out as well. And after the game Mark Giordano said this was on him and I'm here to tell you no, it wasn't Mark. Like, that's a veteran, that's a leader, and, that, and that's good for him, that's a good teammate, but no. I'm sorry, I hate to pick on the guy, Sammy! Sammy! Like, this little gap in the five hole right there, this might not seem like a big gap to you. That's not something that a starting goaltender in the National Hockey League does. It's just not. Especially with the way he started the season prior to this game. If this is a one-off, if this is like Connor Hellebuck and you're like, oh, that's weird that he did that, you can be pretty confident that for the rest of the season he's not going to do that. But like the details are just not there for Sammy. This might have been his best game of the season too. And of course, of course, it's Ryan O'Reilly with his illegal stick. He's not in the Leafs anymore, so it's illegal again, but it's 1-1 because they didn't catch it. It's amazing how they always go like 60 minutes plus without catching it. Legal when he was with the Leafs though. He, he used a different stick. He did. That's not true. I, I saw it. I saw it. A friend of mine showed me a real Ryan O'Reilly stick. It is a goofy piece of work. Sometimes he like scores and wins con Smythes with it. It's weird. Second period about halfway through. The Leafs doing what you gotta do to score on a goaltender who's as hot as UC Soros is in this game, you gotta bang and crash. And you also gotta go to your big guns. So who do they send to the front of the net? You guessed it. David Camp, who I'm pretty sure thinks he'll be arrested if he shoots the puck, gives it to Mark Giordano, the oldest active skater in the National Hockey League. It's actually a pretty nice play. Big Sally from the 40 year old. Happy belated there, Mark. And the Leafs regain the lead up two to one. But once again, barely over two minutes later, the Leafs are on the PK again. This one is Cali Yarncroak taking a trip on Colton Sissons. I was a little salty about this one because it, it was a trip. It was a trip, but I thought a trip was missed seconds before this, but spilt milk. A lot of people are going to blame Sammy for this loss, and like, I think we can criticize Sammy's performance a little bit without losing sight of the rest of the team took too many calls, man. The multiple bench miners in a single game, what are, what are we doing? We can't do that. Anyway, that's not what happened here. What happened here was actually a, just a, just a goal. An amazing goal. Philip Forsberg essentially scores a goal and Ryan O'Reilly assists it by putting his stick down. I know that's not how they count it. It's O'Reilly's goal, but damn. That is just perfect. Threading the needle from Forsberg to O'Reilly. And just like that, 
tough to crack Soros, you finally do, you get the lead, hooray, and it's gone like a fart in the wind! No goals in the third period, which is, it's a shame that the Leafs didn't come up with the two points here, because Sammy actually made some pretty big saves here. And you talk about two teams just trying to give each other the win. Barry went off for tripping Matthews, that was the only, like, legitimate infraction. Other than that, Carrier had a delay of game penalty for throwing the puck over the glass, and the Leafs took two too many men calls in less than eight minutes! Sheldon, get a hold of the bench, bud! Neither team scores on either pair of power play attempts that they get. They don't try particularly hard, especially the Leafs, to come up with the win in the final couple minutes. Hey, I don't play in your conference, you don't play in my conference, let's get a point. They both get a point. We go to overtime and mm, I don't want to sound salty. I'm gonna sound salty. That's okay. Like a hot chicken sandwich. Um, that was a line change contest. It ri- Ooh. And like, I don't want to get too worked up about the Leafs at three on three because are you r really worried about that? Is that your number one priority? No, your number one priority is you want this team to win at the playoffs! You want them to have a team that can do anything in the playoffs, right? Not three on three, whatever, whatever. But also, mm, they're, they're pretty bad at three on three. They were great in their first three on three game this season, but there were some really worrying performances in the preseason and dating back to last year. A lot of them involving the top guys. Matthews, who was out for this one. Uh, Marner, uh, the guys you wouldn't expect. And so that is why Starting David Camp makes sense. Until, like, <clears throat> like that, that really didn't help, did it? Like, he was on to win the face-off. He didn't win the face-off. I mean, the best face-off guys in the league still lose a ton of their face-offs. But what what did David Camp do out there that Matthews couldn't? I, I guess other than uh, he didn't get scored on. That was good. I don't know, man. Like, you trust Matthews out there on the penalty kill now. Just use Austin. Just start with Austin, man. I'm not actually sure the Leafs ever had possession of the thing after that. Like, the Predators just kept suckering the Leafs in. Anytime anyone tried to go for a line change, oh, here they go. And Sammy made some big stops. But the Preds patient method methodical. It's a fresh John Klingberg out there. He had to get on for an exhausted Morgan Riley, but he's out there with a dog-tired Matthews and Nylander. And this screenshot just, it's its a calamity. Like, look at this. Roman Yossi could have scored this goal if he was out there by himself. His teammates are <laughs> basically decoys that the Leafs are ignoring? Willie, Willie, what are you do- what are you doing? I guess he's there for the rebound. He's not helping pretty much anyone, and I do gotta say Sammy. I wouldn't point this out if Sheldon Keefe hadn't already pointed it out this season. There was a game already this season, I can't remember which one. Sammy did pretty well, I think he only allowed two goals, but they were two goals from distance in the first period. It was the Florida game. Two goals from distance in the first period, and even though they could have been defended better, they're still from distance. Listen, it's a great rip from Roman Yossi, it really is, but like, look where it's from! Ah! We can't get a save there, man! It's just tough out there right now. Like, I'm trying to be gentle about it, and I'm like, you know what? You can't save them all. And then I watch Joseph Wold play, and I'm like, well, actually, maybe you can. I don't expect Joseph Wold to stay like a 970-something forever. I don't expect Sammy to be like an 8... 30, 40 something forever? The long and short of it is, at least one of the goals in this game, the first O'Reilly one, should have been stopped. You could argue that this one should have been stopped too. And regardless of what you think about either goal, the Leafs had the second best goalie in this game. I know it's UC Soros. I know that's a tall task. It's just the truth. Questions. This isn't a question, it's just a good point from Nick Alberga. He said, dog poop OT for the Leafs. It happens. Three one and one road trip. They'll take it. Yeah. Like, that's just really good perspective. Uh, the Leafs weren't that great at home to start the season. They go out on the road. Road trip doesn't start great, but they finish it getting, uh, what, what is that? Seven points out of ten. That's pretty good. From Colton, what do you think of Matthews in OT? To me, it seemed like he was a bit slow on his feet, coasting and shadowing as opposed to really trying to make life difficult 
or take it away from Nashville skaters. He does just kind of coast and like put his arms out and nothing happens. And the, I think the reason he does that is teams will try to extend his shifts at every turn because they're afraid to turn it over against him. But he's relaxing because he knows they're just trying to get him to be tired and skate around and get him to make a mistake. The mistake I thought they made at some point when Riley was exhausted out there like two minutes into his uh, shift, have him be the high guy. And the reason you have him be the high guy, I know the high guy has to do a lot of skating, but like, you gotta get him off the ice. At, at some point, he's just gonna stop being able to move. You had to get him off the ice sooner than that. And I know there was a bit of a flub there where Matthews actually made an incredible move, and then I think it hit Riley on his way off. Ah, you, you had to get him off sooner than that. I was less concerned with Matthews and more concerned with that particular play. Favorite Halloween candies, go! Okay, you put me on the spot. Um, uh, I do like a coffee crisp. I don't know if that's one of my favorites. I just know that I've always loved it and I know a lot of people don't like it. Mars bar is elite and crunchy. Crunch, yes, I know a lot of people don't like it, but how, how long do you eat your little chocolate for? 15 seconds, 30, maybe? I eat crunchy bars for half an hour. They get stuck in your teeth, yeah! That's the best part. All right? You're looking at it from like a normal person's perspective. Look, look at me, I'm eating good. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends. It's, I don't care if they watch my videos, so you can tell your friends. Five bucks, that's it. Five bucks, dollarinos. Link in the description, donation to Easter Seals. If you don't win the raffle, it, well, you know, at least you were a good person. You can put that in your letter to Santa Claus, all right?